Welcome back to this episode of Smash Engineering. Today I'm working on a 2000, 2002 Bravada. It's basically an Envoy or Trailblazer, same thing. Or even I think there's even a Saab iteration of this. But uh, let me uh, switch the camera around and show you what we're dealing with here. Okay, so first things first, this is the fuel pressure uh, or fuel tank pressure sensor. Um, the easiest way I found to get to it, and yes, this can be done without a hoist and in your driveway. Um, get yourself a blanket or something to lay on because you know you don't like to lay in bugs um, and then I found that the best thing to do is to lower your spare so if you got a spare on there lower that down because where we need to get is up inside here so um, with the spare tire in the way uh, that just doesn't work now if you don't know how to move your spare tire I'll do a quick little uh, how-to on that too, I guess, because somebody might say, well, I don't even know how to lower my spare tire. Underneath here, you pull this, you'll have bars right here. This is where your jack and everything is supposed to be. I'm missing my jack, I need to go get one. Um, but I have the bars. So you need this short bar, it looks like this, and it has a open, uh, like an open square on this end, and then um, the narrower square on this end. You finagle it. That's the angle you need to be at, if you're wondering. Sorry, my finger's on the screen there. But then you hook this on there, and you go lefty-loosey, and your tire will drop down. Now, I didn't actually disconnect uh, the spare tire from the cable. Let me show you. So, so I just loosened it enough and slid it to the side, and that enabled me to get in here. Let me show you. Oh, it enabled me to get in here. And, and get into this, normally the spare tire is right here. So you got your tire here, you can't even barely get to that. But I actually used the tire as kind of a pillow. I'll rest my head on it, like, like so, kind of comfortable. Not cranking your neck, trying to hold it here. And then you have access to your old sensor and um, you can change that out. And there's, a, there's like a cross piece of plastic, uh, like a latch type thing that's across it and um, so you need to pop that up and then there's two little um, like retaining pieces that hold down on the sides of it uh, and then um, you get that off and obviously you unplug it first and then you can use a screwdriver I'll, I'll show that all here in a second okay much better okay so this flap here is normally folded over over top of it like this so you press in on a little piece here this will pop up and then you got two little clamps on either side let's get a little focus you're focusing on the wrong thing okay two little clamps you got one here and one here so you just pull up on this as you pop those clamps off i did it one-handed and then i took my screwdriver and i just gently put it up underneath here and just gently pried after you get these clips undone um, and be careful because it'll want to stick. The sensor looks like this on the inside. This is my old one, and I set it in the dirt so it looks dirtier than it actually is. But um, this like O-ring or seal here is down into the tank. So you want to be careful not to damage where this presses in or, I mean, you're going to be replacing it obviously if you're doing this, but um, <clears throat> that's the part number there. But yeah, so... Um, I swapped mine out. I'm having some evap leak issues and I was trying to find a video on how to do this and where it's even located. Um, this is the fuel, fuel uh, filler neck here. Um, so I smoke check this entire system. That's also brand new. Um, I smoke checked the entire system and I have no leaks anywhere, but it says I have a large evap leak. So uh, a friend of mine was telling me that if that sensor is reading wrong, and I, and I may be wrong with this, I don't know. I don't know a ton about EVAP systems, but this sensor tells the computer how much pressure there is in the tank. So if this sensor goes bad and it tells the computer that, hey, there's no pressure in the tank when there actually is, it'll tell the computer that there's a, or theoretically, it could tell the computer that there's an EVAP leak um, when there's not. So... That's the idea here. Um, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna snap that back down and then the plug is right here. Um, to unplug it, you just pull up on this and pull back. Uh, my seal's got a little goofed up there, but 
Um, so to plug it back in, we'll just do... I can't, I can't do it with that hand. Hold on, I gotta switch hands. Oh. Like that. Let's plug it back in. Now this uh, flap here was hard to get um, off. So just make sure that you got it good before you pop that back down and uh, you'll be good to go. And then of course, to put your tire back up in place, I have a, I have a boat trailer on here at the moment, so it's a little tougher for me, but if I was smart, I would have removed the boat trailer while I did this, but you just go this direction and you'll see, sorry, I'm trying to turn this and do camera work, but it'll start raising your tire back up into place. Now, when you have this down, it's a good idea to lubricate anything up in there and uh, make sure it doesn't rust out or seize up on you. This is also a good time to check to see if you even know how to get your spare tire down because you get a flat somewhere and AAA is five hours out and you have an eight and you're getting hangry. This is a, it's a good idea to get out and change your tire and go get yourself a burger or a salad or, you know, whatever you like. So, yeah. That's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna finish up, put this up. I'm gonna clear the check engine light. And uh, if you guys will cross your fingers with me, hopefully that fixes my EVAP code. All right, so I just got done cranking that and that's up in place. You'll see over here, there's like a little piece of metal up there that's touching the tire. You want that to be right on the sidewall of your tire. It kind of, it kind of cups your tire like this to kind of hold it while it's up there. And then you simply pull this out that's the end I was talking about. It's kind of like an open end. Whereas this is kind of like still open, but it's closed. It fits inside. It would fit inside of that if you had another piece. All right. Now that we've changed our sensor to a new one, hopefully a good one, uh, we'll set it up here as a sacrifice to the vehicle. Because, you know, got to do what you got to do. We'll pull up. Uh, I'll read the code for you. So you can see what I'm getting now. I know you're going to say if you know anything about these vehicles or if, if this is being shared on a forum or something. Well, there's plenty of other things that could be. And you're right. There's there's many other things. Uh, might need to have the key in the ignition and on. Uh, otherwise, I'm not going to go anywhere with this. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> connection zero. Yeah, because I didn't have my key on. See, things happen. I'm trying to film and do this. Uh there's many other things that could be wrong with this vehicle, um, but I'm getting, oh, that's the first time I've gotten these other codes. I'll have to look into those. But anyway, this one, um, this code is the one that I'm trying to attack right now. I've changed my fuel pump and the sending unit. Um, I've changed the seal, obviously, in there. I've changed the purge valve at the front of the engines i've changed the pur purge valve at the rear of the engine i've smoke checked the whole thing so um this is kind of the last thing i haven't changed <clears throat> my filler neck is not rusted or leaking there obviously i smoke checked it so it wasn't that um so yeah uh hopefully this fixes it so i'm gonna go ahead and clear uh the codes i don't know what those are. i have to i'll have to look into those you probably know what those are if you're watching the video and now you can Google, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to see if there's any pending codes. So EVAP uh, PO440 is the only pending code. So we're going to erase them. Yeah, I want to erase. All right, and I'll drive it. Now, don't get too excited if you do this and you wipe the codes and uh, the code goes away for a few days. I wiped the code last time I changed a part on this. And the code was gone for like five days. So um, I will say the first thing that you'll want to do uh, if you're having an EVAP issue is change either the gas cap or the seal that goes on here will sometimes go bad. Now, I obviously changed mine. Uh, one of the first things I did, but that didn't fix the issue. The other thing is real common on these is the uh, filler neck will rot out and it'll be leaking there. So if your filler neck's rotted out, it's time to change that anyway. So I would change that, change your cap, and then clear your code, see if it comes back. If it comes back, you know, there's many ways to do this. I'm not saying my way is the right way. Obviously, I've been throwing parts at this, um, but 
I've been listening to different people who have way more experience with these vehicles and uh, going that route. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this episode. I really appreciate uh, appreciate you for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me if this helped you. Tell me if this was stupid and I shouldn't have made a video and I wasted my time. Hopefully that's not the case. But uh, yeah, so that's what I did. We I'll jump in the comments section in like a week or so. If that did work, I'll put down in the comment section, hey, my check engine light's off, no issues. Um, well, at least no EVAP issues, hopefully. I don't know what the other two codes are. Hopefully nothing serious. But um, And then, yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. Remember, you're important. Help your neighbor. And uh, let's have a good summer.